Okay, so in the last three demonstrations, I've shown you how to actually get WordPress installed. And now I want to talk about uh, the core files and uh, backing up those core files and understanding which ones are the most important and also understanding how to back up your database. Okay, uh, because remember, you have to have both parts to have this website actually functional. You have to have the files and the database. Okay, so. The first thing I want to show you is if we jump back over here to the file manager, uh, you could either look at this through the file manager or you could look at it through FTP, either one. Now, let's go up a level. Now we're going to go where it says SD places, so let's go down in here. It'll refresh the um, screen, and what you're going to see now is that in addition to having the WP config sample file, we now have this WP config file, and that's the one that I was explaining to you. Um, uh, it was really important as part of the process and how it gets generated, okay? So um, this uh, config file is where all of that information gets stored. So if I were to go over here and go to code editor, let's take a look at it. I'm not going to actually edit it, I just want to take a look at it so you can see. Um, you'll see that in this file it actually defines a few things. It defines my database. All right, and it, what it's doing here is it's saying define and it creates a constant name. Um, and a constant is a variable that does not vary. <laughs> okay, it's uh, basically an unchanging variable that you can use uh, throughout the course of a file um, or, or a course of a set of scripts. And um, that constant remains constant, like you cannot reassign the value of it. Okay, so it's an unchanging variable. Anyway, so you're defining a constant called DB name, and it's going to be the name of your database, right? Student places, and then again, you define a constant for that database user, and in this case, it was student SD places, and then you're also defining a password constant, which is our password, and um, then, and by the way, if any of you try to actually connect to this after this demo, I'm going to change that password, so don't even bother. All right, uh, and then. Um, for the DB host, it's localhost, right? And then it defines some other constants that we didn't set up, but these are the core things that whenever you uh, make a copy of this WP config file, this is incredibly important to have, okay? Now, the other thing too that you're gonna scroll down and see is that you have this section where it actually created a, a set of hash information. And uh, these are encryption keys so that it will, um, have a good, you know, safe connection. And if you scroll down even further, you'll see that this is where it assigns your table prefix. The reason I'm showing you this is because uh, if you were to migrate your installation, you are probably going to have, and when I say migrate your installation, let me tell you what I mean by that. If you were to migrate your installation, say, to a different server, or let's say that you wanted to back it up and install it on your own computer so that at the end of this class, you still have your functional website um, because at the end of this class, I'm gonna end up having to wipe everything off at, at some point. So this way you would actually be able to back your stuff up and have it on your own computer. But to have it functional on a different server, you would have to know some of these things. You'd have to know what the name of the prefix is. Uh, you would have to be able to either know or change this information about the database username and password and maybe even the host name and so, and so forth. So without this file, your website will not be able to connect to the database and therefore you will have no website, okay? So I'm gonna close that WP config file is one of these files that you absolutely have to back up, okay? So if you're taking notes and you should be, this is one that you need to back up, wpconfig.php. Another one that is going to be really important um, that we do not see here because it is a hidden file is a thing called uh, HT Access. So uh, there are a couple of ways that you can see hidden files. Um, one is if you want to do it through the file manager, what you want to do is go up here to settings and you want to make sure where it says uh, show hidden files that it's selected. Okay, and uh, hit save. And then you'll see that hidden HT access file. The other way would be if you wanted to go through your FTP um, client. So for instance, if you wanted to look at Cyberduck, all right? So this is my uh, root level of 
SD places in Cyberduck, and you can see that it has HT access right there. Now, not all FTP clients are going to by default show you your hidden files, and so you would need to go into the settings to show those hidden files. Um, all right, well, let's just jump back here to our file manager in the cPanel, and uh, where we have HT access. Um, you could either look at it by clicking on view, or you could go to code editor. I'm if you do code editor, so if you're like looking at that PHP file that I showed you before, the PHP config, the reason I opened it in code editor is because the code editor will actually show you the color coding. So sometimes it's easier to read the file, but HT access doesn't really have color coding. So um, let's go to uh, view. We can click on view and that doesn't actually open the file for editing. It's technically it's a little bit safer, but I want to show you what HT access looks like inside. Um, there are some things that are really important. I'm not going to get into all the specifics of HT access, but what um, Apache does is it uh, has the ability in its um, configuration files as to whether or not it will follow directives that are listed in HT access files. And for this server, we do uh, we do allow for HT access files to work. And so where it says if module mod rewrite dot c. All right, well, mod rewrite is something basically that is a module for Apache that will allow for the URLs to be rewritten. For instance, if you've ever seen a URL where there's a question mark in it, it's referred to as a query mark, and it has some un distinguishable kinds of things that come after it, well, those are going to be key value pairs, typically, where it's saying, go to this page where certain things are true, right? That's what the query mark, where certain things are true. <clears throat> um, if, you know, those kinds of uh, browser addresses are actually, you know, they're not very user friendly, they're not easy to remember. And so, uh, mod rewrite, for instance, would allow the WordPress installation to rewrite the URL so that it's um, more human friendly. So instead of having a query mark with a bunch of gobbledygook that comes after it, it might actually have some things that would be categorical, for instance, like SD places forward slash, um, instead of having like a question mark with a bunch of junk after it, it might be like SD places forward slash beaches forward slash ocean beach you know, something like that. And the other thing about having a URL that looks like that instead of some gobbledygook contain search terms that somebody would actually search. So anyway, um, so that's what that means. And then look at what it's doing. It's saying the rewrite rule is basically rewriting it so that it looks at SD places as the root level directory for this WordPress installation, and then it looks for index.php, right? So if, for instance, you were to send this over to some other server later, and you decided, oh, I don't want this to be SD places, I just want it to go into the root level of the uh, domain, for instance, right? It would actually be more like forward slash index.php. And so you would have to modify this um, file, but you would definitely still need it. Anyway, if you don't understand that right now, that's okay. This is kind of confusing. There's no reason <clears throat> that you should understand all this. Like this kind of stuff right here, these are regular expressions. Um, regular expressions are confusing, so don't worry about regex stuff. Just know that you need this file uh, or that you might need it. You don't always need it, but you might need it. Okay, so, so far we need HT access and we need uh, WP config which is right here. Now, the other thing that you're always going to need to look at that is going to be uh, custom, all right? All these other things are standard issue items for this installation, but the other thing that's going to be custom is uh, WP content, all right? You can always back this entire folder up and you'll be safe. If you back up WP content, the hidden HT access file and wp-config.php. Let's look inside of WP content and see why. All right, so any plugins that you uh, download through the back end of the WordPress user interface um, and install, they're going to go inside of here. Right now, these are the default ones that come with the um, installation. So a Kismet is something that helps prevent spam um, if you're doing comments and email and stuff like that. Um, hello is just a goofy thing that I always get rid of, it's, but it's a default one that comes with it. But this is where all of your other plugins are going to be placed, 
okay? So it's really important that you always keep that backed up. Your themes, also very important. Right now we have some basic themes installed that just come with WordPress. So we've got the, basically what WordPress will do is it puts the last three years of default WordPress installations in. So it goes 14, 15, 16, okay? And if you're watching this next year, what you're probably gonna see is 15, 16, 17 so far. Okay, let's go back up again. And something else that will be in here later, once we get started, will be a folder called Uploads. Super important. Basically, any kind of attachments that you place in your um, WordPress installation, like picture attachments, picture files, things like that, um, PDFs, you know, that kind of stuff, they're gonna go inside of an Uploads folder. And if you don't back that up, if you don't back any of this up, you're in trouble, but especially if you don't back up your uploads, you are up a creek. Because themes and plugins, you can technically, you know, always go find again, um, unless, of course, you wrote a custom theme that's not backed up. But you can always go typically find your themes and plugins again if you had to rebuild everything. But your uploads, that could be a whole different story. All right, so even though we don't have an uploads folder here yet, we will the minute we try to upload something for the first time through WordPress's interface. All right, so WP content, super important to back up. HT access, also super important to back up. And lastly, WP config, super important. All right, the rest of it, I mean, ideally, what it'd be ideal is to back your whole site up, um, but, if you don't have time and you just need to make some really quick backups, those are the three things to grab for sure. And you know, right now it's a really small installation, but the minute you start putting tons and tons of uploads in that WP content folder, all of a sudden your website's gonna start getting more and more bloated, okay? So that's how you will look at backing up your file system. Now the easiest way to do that, of course, would be to go up a level if you're doing it through the file. Uh, manager in cPanel, it would be to go up a level and for all of SD places you could go here and click compress and you can choose what kind of compression. I'm going to do uh, uh, gzip tar because it's going to be smaller. Um, this would be the smallest one, uh, bzip, all right? but I, I'm going to just keep it at uh, gzip. If for some reason you don't have um, a tool that will decompress properly for gzip, then you can always do a tar. Um, excuse me, you can always do a zip folder um, because uh, tar is the next level of compression. Gzip is even uh, more compressed. Anyway, so I'm going to compress that file. It'll make a copy that's compressed, and then this you could just select as a single file, and then you can click on download. Okay, and then it'll make a backup of just your files. Now that is only backing up your files and it's doing it through the file manager. If for some reason you can't, you know, get into your file manager because maybe you don't remember your login to get to cPanel or something, then the other thing that you can always do is you can go through any FTP client. All you have to do, all you have to know is, you know, your host name, your FTP username, and um, your password, right? Okay, so let's uh, look at this. And what you might have to do if you've been sitting on this idle connection, you might have to refresh. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna go back up to public.html. And I wanna show you something. Um, first of all, here's the the file that we had compressed up in the file pan or the file manager on cPanel. And what I wanna show you is where it says SD places. Um, unfortunately, this particular server doesn't support um, it doesn't support uh, normal users using compression through FTP. So, like if you were to try to compress it from here, you were maybe right click it and maybe go down to create archive, and you see that these are all grayed out. Um, sometimes different hosts will not allow compression through FTP, or that maybe they'll only allow for certain types of compression. So don't be shocked if you can't compress through your FTP client. So what that means is that for this particular server, if your only mechanism <clears throat> for connecting would be FTP, then most likely you just have to download the, the entire regular folder um, and or individual files, okay? So that might be an instance where for instance, if you're just using FTP and you didn't have time to download the entire SD Places installation, but the most important thing is like 
maybe making sure that you've got your WP content, um, you know, or even better yet, if you know for a fact that nothing has changed, like none of your plugins have changed, none of your themes have changed, but maybe you've got some new uploads and you just want to back them up, you can drag the uploads folder, which currently does not exist, right? But you could drag it down to your own computer, for instance, if you just wanted to make sure that you needed to back something up really fast. But generally, it's a good idea to back up the entire site uh, files. So anyway, I just want to show you that as a as a option. And then the other thing too that I always do uh, whenever I make backups of something and zip them or uh, compress them in some way is I will rename them and I will put a date stamp so that I know what that was as of that date. All right. So for instance, on this one, um, I might come over here and rename this instead of just SD places tar uh, GZ. By the way, tar stands for tarball and the GZIP stands for gunzip. It's just different uh, compression formats. Anyway, so uh, for SD places, I might name it, uh, append it, I guess, with today's date. In this particular instance, it's uh, like, I think it's the 30th or something, 0930016 or something, right? Where it'd be September 30th, uh, 2016. All right, and so... I can rename it like that, and then I know that this was uh, backed up on uh, September 30th of 2016, and I would do the same whenever I go to back up my database so that I'd know that those two things would match together and that they would work together. Um, and one other thing, too, is that you'll also notice that if you were to upload uh, something that was compressed on the server, if you right-click, you also are not allowed to expand it. Uh, where it says expand archive, it wouldn't allow you to decompress it. So um, anyway, that's just something that is not going to be true of every server. It just happens to be true of this one. So um, just remember when you're in the file system using FTP and you need to back stuff up or download stuff, it's going to be um, just full folders and um, uh, files if you're uploading them. If you're downloading them and you happen to already have a compressed version on, you can download it, but you can't compress something and then download it through FTP. All right. So, um, but if you are in the C panel, you are able to compress and uh, upload and stuff. But the, the other limitation with C panel though, it's different than FTP, is that you cannot download um, multiple files at once. Like for instance, let's hit reload so that we can see the name change here. Yeah. Uh, so like if I wanted to download this entire folder, SD places, see how download is disabled? It doesn't allow me to download multiple files at once. That's why it does allow you to do compression through file manager so you can uh, download compressed stuff. And I think a big part of that is so that the server will uh, preserve some of its bandwidth, right? It'll use its own processing to compress, but it preserves bandwidth during that download and upload. Okay, so let's now look at how we can back up the database. So if we go back to the main C panel, we can look under the files section and there are two different backup options. There are lots of different ways, by the way, to back up your database, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you uh, a few, okay? So the first one is, let's look at the backup wizard. Now, if you look at where it says backup restore, it tells you the different options that you'll have whenever you uh, click on this button. Go ahead and click on the backup button. And it gives you two different options. You can either do a full backup or you can do a partial backup. If all you want to do is backup your database, then you want to come over here and click on MySQL databases. Okay, and then it'll show you all the different databases that you have and you can select one of them and just download it straight from here. So if I click on this, you'll see that I can download it into like my downloads folder and it'll give me a name. So it's going to call it uh, student underscore SD places dot SQL dot GZ. The GZ means it's going to be a gun zipped format. So what I would do before I even completely download it is I would go ahead and put uh, a date on it. So I might do, like I said before, 093016, for instance, and I would just save it. Okay. And then it just downloads. You can see right here, it just downloads that file for me. And if I open it straight from my browser, it will decompress it. And now I've got a SQL file. Now, if you look at a SQL file and don't be shocked by the way that this looks, I'm just going to take a quick look at it. 
basically all a SQL file is, is um, a series of commands that will recreate the, um, basically a series of uh, queries that'll recreate the database. You can see just by looking at here at this, like it'll say, okay, if the table already exists, drop it. And then it's gonna create the table SD comments. And so it tells you all the columns to make, and then it gives you the different primary keys. And then after that, it will say insert into SD comments. And then it puts all the records that uh, we have, for instance. And so basically when you back up a database, it's called doing a database dump. I know it's a terrible name, but you do a database dump. It basically issues a set of uh, queries or commands that will recreate the database whenever you want to um, upload this file into the MySQL server, okay? So that's what that is. And so what I would do typically if I'm trying to make a, just a really you know succinct little set of backups is that I might create a folder, let's say that I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say um, SD places site backup 093016 for instance and i might just drop my sql file in there all right if you wanted to put the whole gzip file you could it, it's up to you however you want so that i'm not confused by that uh, i am probably going to just delete this so i'll move to the trash and so now i've at least got my database in there and so like if you were to say, all right, well now I need my file system because just having the database is incomplete. What you can do um, is if you you know were to pair that up with your file manager, for instance, uh, you could go into public and remember we had um, we had this uh, compressed file right here, and this is the file system. It's not the database; it's the file system. And so we could click on download, and then we could choose to download it into. Uh, SD places site backup and we'll just download it here and then now once this is fully downloaded we have both our file set and we have our database and so we have a complete backup that is one way that you could do it using the file manager okay and uh, the cPanel backup tool for MySQL um, let's just jump back over here now and let's uh, go back home real quick and I want to show you again if we were to walk through that backup wizard again and we clicked on backup again another way to just get every single thing that is in your entire directory your whole home directory all right when I say home directory let's take a look in file manager what I'm talking about this is your home directory right here if I clicked on this very top level that I have access to it includes all of the stuff, like all of my HT passwords that are hidden, uh, my Etsy folder, all this stuff that for the most part, you're not even gonna know what to do with, right? It also includes my public underscore HTML uh, folder. It also includes all of my mail, if I was doing anything with mail. And then the other thing too that it would do is it would um, also create like a MySQL and folder and some other stuff for you. So, Let's look here. If I go ahead and I click on full backup, all right, it's gonna give me some options. It's gonna say, hey, generate a full backup. And you see here, I actually went ahead and I did a full backup just a little while ago so that you don't have to watch me do this. But it also warns you that a full backup will create an archive of the files and configurations on your website. Um, but it's saying that you can keep a local copy of it, but you can't restore full backups through your cPanel interface. You could do it manually, but it's not like just through cPanel, you can click a button that says restore and everything works. This is so that you have a manual backup, like especially if you needed to migrate it to a different server. That is where it really is important. Um, so uh, because eventually at some point your account for this for this class is going to go away so you need a backup like this um, at some point and it would get everything not just your sd uh, places project but it would get you know your first project and your dev folder it'd get everything okay so you can click where it says generate a full backup if you choose your home directory it's going to basically drop it into your home directory if you choose FTP server or one of these things, then it will FTP your stuff to another server. So for instance, if you wanted to, let's say you have your own hosting, you could FTP it to your own hosting. For right now, for most of you, we're gonna set it to home directory. If you wanted to email you whenever it's finished, it'll tell you that it's complete. Otherwise, you can say do not send email verification, right? 
and then you would just click on generate backup and it would start backing up okay I'm not going to do that because I've already done it all right and what basically would happen is that when you go to check your email all right so let's say I check my email I can open this and what we've got here is an email that tells me hey my backup is complete it tells me where to go look for it all right um, and and so on okay so that's kind of nice and it'll tell you when it's done so you don't have to worry about it uh, sitting there waiting around so if you want to go find where that full backup is first of all you could come here and look for it right you could come to the backup section and here it's available for download the other thing that you could do is just come over here in your main uh, home directory all right and you could scroll down and you would see down here it says backup and it's a uh, a, a gun zip file you could select it and you could click on download this is about uh, 40 and a half megabytes so uh, go ahead and click on download it'll tell you you know where you want to download it you would choose uh, not SD site backup because it's more than SD site backup it is a full backup of your entire home directory and it even says right here uh, for your entire student account and if you wanted to rename it so that it's really clear that it is your entire account you could rename it in such a way and then you would click on save okay and so it downloaded and now the backup is in my downloads folder and it looks like this so if I were to decompress it let's just decompress it and get the folder so uh, we can look inside of it and you'll see all this stuff right um, well the thing that you want to really pay attention to is where it says home dear all right that's your home directory and you can look in inside of here and you'll find your public HTML folder this is where all of your website file system things are okay so it had my dev folder it had my project one it had my SD places so you can see this is more than just my WordPress backup it's my entire home directory plus also if you scroll down further you will see a folder called MySQL or MySQL. All right, and so you can see here is my SQL file for student underscore SD places. And if I were to take a look at it, you would see that it is in fact the same, um, same document that's gonna generate um, all of these uh, commands that's gonna recreate my database for me, okay? All right, there is one last way that I wanna show you how you can back up a database. Um, so let's go back to our cPanel. And the reason I wanna show you this last way through phpMyAdmin, let's open that back up, um, is because there are gonna be a lot of times when on different hosting uh, platforms, you don't have all these other fancy ways of backing your database up. Uh, if you get really inexpensive or cheap hosting, this might be the only way that you really have to back your stuff up. Um, additionally, this is also going to work uh, like if you're on your own computer, your own local host environment, you can always go into your PHP admin uh, installation through your development package like Jamp or MAMP or whatever, and you can back it up this way. So to back up an individual database, you'll click on the actual database to use it. All right, and then uh, really simply, you'll go over here to export, okay, and you can do a quick uh, backup. All right, and you're gonna download it as a SQL format. And if you wanted to see all the different uh, display options, you could. You could back up individual tables if you wanted to select just some of them, right? Um, you can uh, view the output as text if you wanted to not actually create a file, but you just wanted to generate the text. Uh, that's an option. And there are all these other uh, choices that you can choose too. You could choose compression from here if you wanted. Um, you can also choose different formats from here if you wanted. Like, for instance, if you wanted to create uh, an, uh, where is it, uh, a PHP array, which would be outrageously crazy. Um, but you can create a CSV file, like if you wanted to open it up in Excel, uh, CSV is comma separated value. This is a uh, comma separated value specifically for Microsoft Excel. Uh, you could also do it as a, an XML file. You could do it as a JSON. So you can see all these different formats that you can play with. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, and you want to, you, you know, probably do structure and data. If you were to do just, just do the structure, it would literally create, recreate the structure for you later, but it wouldn't preserve any of the data. So um, anyway, uh, there are all these other options. I'm not gonna go into all of them, but most of you, you're gonna just wanna choose quick. 
All right, and you'd click on Go, and then it would uh, give you the place to download it, and just like the SQL file that I already had right here, it would download it for you. And it would be the exact same kind of file. All right, so that's another way of doing it. And just so you know, so you're not confused, if you were ever uh, to click on one of these tables, like let's say that we went to the user table, and then you went to export, just be aware that all you're about to export now is just the table called SD users. So you always need to make sure that when you're in PHP at my admin, you need to make sure to look at the breadcrumb trails to make sure that you know exactly what part you're in. So if you want to get the entire database, you don't want to be inside of SD users, you want to click on student SD places, right? Because that's the full database with all of these tables, all right? But there might be times when you just want one table, right? So you could, you know, choose the users table and then choose to export it and it would only export just that one table, for instance, okay? So those are all the different ways that you can use to back up your stuff. Uh, those are most of the ways that you can use to back up your stuff from this server and there's really no good reason for you to not back your stuff up now that you know how to do it. You are responsible for backing up your own data in this class. And one of the reasons for that is because uh, when you go off to do this for a living, if you're not already doing it for a living uh, to some degree, um, that's the way it really is. You are the one who ends up being responsible for this stuff. Um, whenever you your clients entrust you with the care um, of their, their web properties, you've got to understand all of the different ways that you have at your disposal to protect the data. So uh, this is part of your learning um, process, right? So backing, backing your stuff up is important. Get used to it and uh, anytime I would say at all that you've done any kind of significant amount of work on your websites uh, this semester, I would strongly advise you to do a backup and um, you know if you really kind of get lost and you're like I don't remember how to do the individual backups or whatever you can always just go to that backup wizard and do a complete full backup and just you know go have coffee or something while it while it does its magic okay uh, but anyway all right so that's going to do it for this um, particular uh, set of demonstrations thank goodness I'm sure you're saying um, and then uh, in another demo like later one of the things that you'll see so that you don't have any trepidation about you know m monkeying with this stuff is I'll show you how to you know drop tables or drop databases and restore them through PHP my admin and so that you can see some troubleshooting techniques okay